Hello and welcome to Learn ADS in 5 Minutes. This is tutorial 60 on basics of transient simulator in ADS. Now before we start, subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, click on the bell icon to enable all the notifications. And after you watch the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about how to run transient simulator in ADS. And in this video, I will talk about the basics. In the next video, we will talk about little more advanced features of transient simulator. Now in the category of simulation transient, you will find the simulation controller, which you can see I have placed on my schematic design. And from the sources time domain library, uh, because essentially transient simulator is a time domain simulator. So from that library, I have placed a VTPRPS source. And, but you will get uh, plenty of other type of sources available to be used in your design. And I have placed a transmission line, which in this case is a simple micro strip transmission line for a particular length. At the output, I have given a wire label V out and I have connected an I probe at the output. Now this I probe is configured to allow saving the transient analysis output for all the name nodes such as this V out so that we can store the waveform or those nodes whichever we have provided the label on. And also we have synchronized the VTPRBS source from, from the list of available sources uh, so that the I diagram always gets updated depending upon the property or the data rate which you define in this particular source. In this source, I have defined bitrate as 5 Gbps and rise and fall time of 50 picosecond. Now to set up a transient simulator, you basically only need to define two main things. One is the stop time. That means for how long you want to run simulation and the time step. And notice this is not the exact time step. This is the max time step. Now, when we go ahead and run this simulation, um, ADS transient simulator automatically adjusts the, uh, the sampling time step based on the circuit and the source which you're trying to analyze. And here you can see the warning message that max time step was reduced to 12.5 picosecond, although our setting was one nanosecond. But to resolve the bandwidth of the circuit and the source, it was automatically adjusted and, you know, based on the internal logic. Now, after the simulation, you can see I have plotted V out where you can see the output, you know, voltage waveform as well as the I diagram from the list of available measurements here. And these first few measurements get produced by the I probe and remaining V out is the traditional output uh, when you run a time domain simulator. And notice that you can see a little bit of the reflections and also the impact of those reflections in the I diagram. Now, if we go ahead and change the property of this line to be close to 50 ohm, and when we go ahead and run, now it's a kind of fully mashed system. You can notice the voltage waveform is a lot cleaner. The I diagram is pretty proper as you would expect. Now, these are very fundamental of running transient simulation. There are a few other things which you can also do while running transient simulation. In this video, I will only going to give you a few glimpses of that, but in the next video, we will talk about little more advanced capabilities of transient simulator for more practical setup. In terms of integration, the default time step control method, which is basically adjusting this time step is set to truncation error. And that's how the simulator is able to adaptively change the time stepping depending upon the circuit and the source uh, which you have used in your design. However, if you want to run it like a classical spice, you can change the method to be fixed method. And now with fixed method, this max time step is actually the real time step based on which your voltage waveforms will be sampled. And now here you can see this is moving at one nanosecond resolution resulting in the poor I diagram and waveform. So if you try to use the fixed method, make sure 
the time step is set as per the Nyquist criteria so that you have the right performance. But if you switch it to truncation error, then you don't need to worry about any of those things. So with truncation error, the, the simulation time step becomes adaptive and you will always get the right result as you hope for. Now to understand a little more settings, always go to help documentation available inside ADS and it provides a pretty detailed description of the various integration methods, how to set up convolution analysis and so on. And in the next video, we will talk a little bit more about convolution analysis because more often than not, you will have a frequency domain models um, as your circuit design it could be an S-parameter model, or it could be a transmission lines based circuit, which you might be analyzing. So hopefully this gave you a quick start on how to configure transient simulator and look at the output results. In the next video, we will talk about a little more advanced capability of transient simulator. So stay tuned for that video and wish you all the best in your design work.